Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, October 12th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, a huge protest underway in Berlin as 250,000 people march against the TTIP, a trade deal between the U.S. and the European Union that critics say will benefit the large corporations. Then, the U.N. says that Europe and the United States must take more refugees and get rid of sovereignty. Plus, an update on last week's attack against Doctors Without Borders in Afghanistan. The Pentagon says it will pay money to the victims' families, but will not provide details of the bombing. And a former intelligence analyst says what we've been saying all along. Political correctness is a manipulative tool for centralizing power. Yeah, you think? All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, today is Columbus Day, and we see a movement afoot to get rid of Columbus Day and replace it by Indigenous Peoples Day. Now, I'm not going to defend Christopher Columbus as an individual. We need to move beyond simplistic hagiographies. Every individual, every culture has good spots and dark spots. And that's one, what we're going to look at today in this segment. We're going to look at both sides of this issue and see if there isn't a way that we can reach common ground on individual liberty. We're going to look at what the right says about, or conservatives, we should say, about Christopher Columbus. We're going to look at what Russell Means said about Christopher Columbus. And we're going to look at where they can find common ground. Because what we're seeing right now, throughout Europe and also in America, we're seeing multiculturalism, true multiculturalism, being destroyed in the name of multiculturalism. We're seeing a new kind of neo-colonialism that's being reenacted. We're seeing what quite possibly could be a transatlantic slave trade agreement that is similar to the transatlantic slave trade in its essence. Let's take a look at first at what's going on, the, per, the pushback against Columbus Day. Nine cities have abolished Columbus Day in favor of Indigenous Peoples Day. This is an article from RT. They say the city council of Albuquerque, New Mexico, as well as many others, they say in those nine cities, eight of those cities passed resolutions in just the last two months. So this is something that's accelerating quite a bit. They noted 500 years of Indian resistance since the arrival of Christopher Columbus. Now, they try to say that this isn't an anti-Columbus day, but it is a positive celebration of indigenous people's culture. You know, it just happens to happen on uh, Columbus Day. And they point out that there's been a long history here in the United States of colonialization, of genocide, of slavery. Well, you know, that was true before Europeans even came here. That's part of the issue. And I think we should remember what Russell Means said when he talked about, you know, we look at indigenous people and everything. I consider myself to be a Native American. I have family that goes back for several hundred years that I would say I'm a Native American. And Russell Means was sensitive to that. He said, that's why I call it the American Indian Movement, to distinguish between the people who were here and the people who came as settlers. But I think we need to unify on something else. Let's look at what Russell Means said eight years ago in 2007 on Columbus Day. You know, you think that Hillary Clinton's going to save you? Uh -huh. is totally based on the armed forces of the United States of America. You get rid of the armed forces. 
taxes and you don't have an economy because they've shipped it all out, Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. Understand you cannot have a country that champions individual liberty like your Constitution does. You cannot have individual liberty if you only have two political parties. Right? savages to the north have formed a near perfect union that has endured for centuries. Consequently, they wrote the Constitution of the United States and the amendments championing individual liberty. Now in that short clip, you heard Russell Means touch on a lot of different subjects. He talked about the futility of thinking that Hillary Clinton is going to be fundamentally different from the Republicans who were full out on war. And of course, we've seen that Barack Obama has instituted his own wars, his drone assassinations, and on and on, attacking a hospital for 30 minutes this last uh, weekend, and actually the weekend before last, but not being bothered to even investigate what went wrong. So it's futile to think that we're going to have a candidate from either of these two major parties, that's what he was talking about, that's going to push back against the military industrial complex. He also talked about the police state, but he focused on individual liberty, and that's where we can find common cause. Benjamin Franklin found common cause with the Indians in their Bill of Rights and in other structures that they had to keep power from being concentrated. That's where we need to focus. Now, in an essay, uh, Russell Means had pointed out the futility of celebrating Columbus Day by saying, when he was rescued by Indians, it presented a glorious opportunity. The cultures of Europe and of the Americas could have merged and the beauty of both races could have flourished. But although his own diaries indicated that he was greeted by the Indians with the most generous hospitality he had ever known, he immediately began the enslavement and the slaughter of the Indian peoples of the Caribbean island. And he points out as detailed in the American Heritage magazine in October 76, Columbus personally oversaw the genocide of the Indian nation in what is now Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So you understand that it is a mixed bag. Certainly, we don't need to get tied up in defending Christopher Columbus. It really isn't important one way or the other what he did as a man. What we need to focus on is what we can find in both cultures that supports individual liberty that supports true multiculturalism. And I mean that in the sense of tolerance, not using multiculturalism as a weapon. But look at the way the conservatives would look at this. And this is an article from New Republic. They talk about discovering Columbus's legacy. They point out in the New World, tribe after tribe, civilization after civilization, rose to power, oppressed and enslaved its neighbors, only to be oppressed and enslaved itself as soon as a new power came onto the scene. So in this respect, the history of the New World is no different from the history of the Old World. And the Spanish and other Europeans were just the latest to rise to power over the inhabitants of the Americas. So you understand that what happened in America had already been going on with the Aztecs, the Incans, uh, the Spanish when they came here were brutal in their colonialization. How do we rise above that? We rise above that by taking the best of what we've produced out of the last several hundred years, things like the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Magna Carta. Those are the things, though, that are now being destroyed. And the way they're being destroyed is in the name of tolerance, in the name of multiculturalism. Look at this story from the Daily Caller. Former intelligence analyst says political correctness is a manipulative tool for centralizing power. Former intelligence analyst Stella Morabito said, if you push an agenda to centralize power, you need mass ignorance and you need effective propaganda. She says political correctness provides a semantic fog where manipulation can occur under the guise of being fair or non-discriminatory. And so what we see now is we see the shaming of people, we see bringing in a monolithic culture. It's gone full circle. The colonial people, uh, powers of Europe are now being dissolved themselves Again, being run by the same corporations. Not the same corporations, but similar corporations with similar methods. History doesn't repeat itself, but it certainly rhymes.
We saw the mass enslavement, the destruction, the genocide of people who were in America, who were natives at the time. And now what we're seeing in Europe, we're seeing what used to be true multiculturalism. All these small countries with their own currency, their own culture, their own laws and government, all being subsumed into a monolithic instrument for the benefit of the corporations. And the way they're doing that is to install a new monolithic people, to bring those people in. That's what open borders are about, is establishing a new monolithic culture that can be more easily controlled to erase the uh, people who are in place. That's what's happening right now. And a big part of that, of course, is the trade agreement. An insider says that the EU and the U.S. must take more refugees and get rid of sovereignty. This is an article from The New American. They say Peter Sutherland, the U.N. Special Representative of the Secretary General for International Migration, says that national sovereignty is an illusion, a mere shibboleth that must be done away with. Now, understand the word shibboleth that came from a Jewish culture uh, back in the Old Testament. They were talking about how people would not, some, some people that were from a certain area would not be able to say that word. And that's how they would identify the people that they wanted to let in and the people that they would destroy. A shibboleth essentially is a custom, a culture, something that distinguishes a people, something that is now no longer important. That is a shibboleth. Here's his full quote. He says, I will ask governments to cooperate, to recognize that sovereignty is an illusion, that sovereignty is an absolute illusion that has to be put behind us. The days of hiding behind borders and fences are long gone. We have to work together, cooperate together to make a better world. And that means taking on some of the old shibboleths, taking on some of the old historic memories and the images of our own country and recognizing that we're part of humankind. So what he's doing is he's selling the destruction, wholesale destruction of cultures, the wholesale destruction of the rule of law, of the ideas of individual liberty that have held these civilizations together, the best of what we have created. He's throwing that away, and what he's going to do is give us the worst of what we experienced in the past, historically. Look at what's going to happen with the TPP. This is an article that came out uh, just last Friday, TPP to kill thousands by expanding monopoly power of drug companies. Kit Daniels, Infowars.com pointed out that three years of market exclusivity for new forms and uses of old medicines is something that is going to be showing up in the new chapter of the TPP on intellectual property rights. Now, we've had Orrin Hatch, who I would say is not so much a senator as he is a pharmaceutical rep. That's what he represents, the big pharmaceutical companies. He criticized the TPP as it's in its so-called final form. He criticized the fact that, that uh, patents went from 12 to five years. But what he didn't talk about is that there is this new thing that they have brought up, saying that if they discover a new use for a drug, they can extend it and get exclusive use of it for another three years. That might possibly be far more important than the 12-year uh, thing that they have right now, the 12-year copyright trade agreement that they have right now. But you're not going to hear anything about that. You're going to see them wringing their hands about how they're taking a hit on copyrights when in reality they're extending copyrights. And as Kit points out, when you raise the price of drugs from a generic drug that might cost $70 per person to one that is under exclusive rights and make it $7,000 per person, 100 times greater, people are going to die. Now, Europeans are waking up to what's going on with the TTIP. Hundreds of thousands protested this deal in Berlin this last weekend. They say that uh, locals, uh, the people who held the rally, put the crowd at 250,000. The Berlin police said it was 100,000. They banged drums, they blew whistles, they held up posters that read, yes, we can stop TTIP. So hundreds of thousands of people are protesting in just one European city. Where are the American protests? Do Americans understand that this is about a lot more than just jobs versus trade? This is about erasing sovereignty. The one-two punch of open borders and these trade partnerships are going to destroy our nations, are going to destroy the rule of law. Just as Russell Means said in his book, Where White Men Fear to Tread, he said, the American government has broken every treaty it ever made with the Indians. And he said, now they're breaking the treaty they made with you.